Hello, everybody, and welcome to Screen Score and More with Zach and Julie. Hello, Zach. Hey, Julie. How are you doing? I'm good. We should tell everybody the date of this recording is February 24th, 2024. Very exciting times. <laughs> I kind of feel like this is a tough time of year because it's like not a lot not as many things going on, no holidays. And, you know, it's just kind of, um, and the weather is kind of some days, not that great. Now today it was blue sky, beautiful, freezing, like under freezing temperatures. So did you venture out today? I walked the dogs and yes, it was freezing. Yes. Yes. Yes, I went, I went to Walmart and had like someone accidentally bumped their cart into me and I had all these kind of problems. I just could not wait to go home where it was safe. Pardon? Yeah. Traffic jam. Um, people jam. Um, I was on my way out and the people ahead of me, as soon as they got out the door, they stopped. And then the guy that was following behind me, his cart, he just kind of pushed it into my, my um, ankle. So he had a whole pile up. <laughs> Did it? Did you get like an injury? Like, was it was it bad or? It didn't bleed or anything, but it was just annoying. And um, so if I can have a tip for the people watching, when you walk out of the store, don't stop. <laughs> if you want to stop and look where your car is, that's fine. But step aside, otherwise people will mow you over. <laughs> that's my Walmart tip for the day. Well, there you go. All right, so let's start by talking about um, Johnny Menzel. There's a curveball for everyone listening. So yeah, uh, Johnny Manziel was just recently on a podcast called Club Shay Shay, and it's with Shannon Sharp, who is a... Uh, personality analyst and was a former um very talented uh, tight end back in the day so he does these interviews now and so he did one with johnny manzel and um i had watched a documentary toward the end of the year about him as well and i didn't realize you know, there's a lot to his story. I'm not saying that, you know, he should have acted the way he acted, but um, it's very interesting. What What is your takeaway from uh, hearing his story on the podcast? I actually really loved listening to the podcast. I mean, of course, his time in Cleveland as, as quarterback was, was disappointing and uh, he didn't live up to all the hype that he once had, and it was just a very difficult situation overall. But I really liked a lot of what he talked about, just sort of his perspective on everything, kind of looking back and, and how he, he is now trying to improve upon his life and, and everything like that he did wrong in regards to drugs, alcohol, um, laziness, uh, just a, a variety of different things. And so I definitely recommend you listen to that interview with Shannon Sharp and Johnny Manzo for sure. Yeah, we'll have a link um, in the description. And, um, and the one uh, thing I, just... that I really, uh, oh, do you want to go ahead? I was just going to say that um, after watching the documentary, my one takeaway that was shocking was when he played for the Browns, he did not watch one minute of uh, the the tapes, uh, the videos that they, you know, that they're supposed to watch. Not one minute. Oh, yeah, exactly. He had a lot of uh, laziness and just apathy, and he, he wasn't the same guy that he once was as the of course, a and quarterback that was just absolutely amazing that got him drafted in the NFL in the first place. But one thing I really uh, related to Johnny Manziel, and this is kind of, I think might be sort of interesting, is he talked about how he won the Heisman Trophy. And so 
at the age of 22, he felt like he had already achieved his life goals. And so for my perspective, and I'm, of course, not a Heisman Trophy uh, quarterback, even though I, I wish I, I could be. Um, I, and I've said this many times, but if you would have told a young Zach about everything I have done with my you know, website and, and writing articles and, and all that stuff, I would have been thrilled with that for my um, life. And so hearing that about Johnny Manziel, where he sort of reached his life goal uh, before uh, reaching the age of 25, I related to that in a, in a lot of ways, just simply because of the fact that I was this huge Cleveland sports fan as like a little boy and then and, and just uh, growing up loving the teams and, and all of that and uh, making a, a brand name and, and everything. And so it was just uh, sort of an interesting perspective to kind of take. Yeah, um, I I was really surprised that when I watched the documentary that when he was at Texas, he would play, but then, you know, he would like um, work hard, play hard. He would, you know, give a lot of effort on the team and the games. But then after the game, you know, it would be drinking and alcohol and all that. And Texas A&M did not do anything, even though they had strict rules. They let him get by because he was making them so much money. They built a new stadium because of him. So they let him. Now, obviously, it's Johnny's fault the way things turned out. But there was people along the way that enabled him. So the when he started for the Browns, he it was like it was work. They made him, you know, actually they were after him to try to do work. And everybody was watching him and. I kind of felt like he, as the minute he stepped in Cleveland, the vibe wasn't wasn't good, and he didn't he just didn't want to do it, and his attitude was horrible. Which sometimes I get that vibe from Deshaun Watson in the beginning of the season. He was at Cleveland, you know, maybe had a few missteps. Everybody's watching him because they paid him so much money, and you know he almost had had an attitude like he didn't want to be there. It's an interesting comparison. Only difference I would compare with Watson and, and Manziel is that the Watson saga now in Cleveland has to do with a new contract that he signed, whereas Johnny's was college versus professional and, and the paradox between those two. So yes, they're both quarterbacks and they both done poorly in Cleveland, just like a plethora of other quarterbacks, unfortunately. But yeah, I do see wh where you're coming from with that that comparison. And, and I think there's a lot to that. And a lot of people don't like Deshaun Watson um, based off of his legal troubles, of course. But then the other part would be what you were re referencing in kind of his attitude and just the way that he carries himself. And I think that's also a big part of why he is disliked here in Cleveland. Also, besides just not being a good quarterback so far. Yeah, I, I do feel there's more potential with him than Johnny, although that's not saying much <laughs> because Johnny didn't really do anything. But we are paying Deshaun, like you said, a whole lot more than we paid Johnny. And But I do have hope that if he starts the season with a good attitude, and he could get some support from the players, which I'm not sure he was getting this past year. You know, we might still, there's a chance with him. I'm hoping because, you know, we still have him. So <laughs> I'm hoping things are going to go well. Well, and, and people will use this reference with doctors a lot of the time in the sense where they'll say, hey, even if you're an a-hole, even if you're a unkind person or this or that your results are what ultimately matter and so in the sense of a of a doctor it would be can you find a cure to whatever it is that i have and even if you're not a nice guy or or girl 
it's it's just a matter of can you provide the results and that's what people take i think ultimately with with anything is they put aside your personality if you are able to provide results so i'm going to be mean to you every day now <laughs> no that would be horrible you and the jokes so what if i provide the results no uh, i'm sorry with me attitude is everything it's like i mean that's for me it's it, it really is attitude and it's like if people interact with me and they have a horrible attitude i will i would try to le lessen my interactions with this person because i feel like everybody deserves respect and um you know, it, we're all a team, you know, if so, you're on my football team or you're on my podcast team or we're working together or, you know, whatever kind of relationship we're having, it's like, it's a mutual, um, respect. And if I don't have that, I will avoid until I get it. So it's interesting is actually, if you want to bring up a guy, that's like the exact opposite of Watson or Manziel, if you brought up running back Nick Chubb for the Browns, he's been in the news as of late, and it's not for anything negative, just besides his his contract. So um, the Browns have a problem, and this kind of does have to do with Watson and, and all the money that he's supposed to make. The Browns have a lot that they owe people, and Nick Chubb is a another running back on the team that is a guy that's owed a lot of money this year. And so fans are sort of questioning if the Browns are going to be willing to pay him. And he's like one of the most loved guys. And I love Nick Chubb. Everybody does. He's great on every level, both on the field and his personality. Yeah, I think the NFL, you know, should, um, you know, try to look at people's character more when they're looking to sign people. But sometimes they take a blind eye, like you were saying, it's like, oh, they're going to ignore that because they can perform. And but it affects everybody on that team because now they can't bring in certain people because of the money. Some of the people that are performing well and and have that integrity may not be with the team going forward. And it's really, in my personal opinion, uh, it was really a bad decision. It's kind of like if you're running a corporation and you hire somebody, you pay them too much and you really shouldn't have paid them, you know, but you brought them on because they were supposed to be some hot shot. Well, you know, now there's other talented people that, um, that you can't hire or, you know, someone may leave because they're upset with that person and that was a good person on the team. So, you know, hiring one person, whether it be in the NFL or a corporation, it affects the whole system. Absolutely. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what the Browns ultimately do. Uh, there's been talk of restructuring his contract. Um, the belief is overall that they're not going to just, you know, drop Nick Chubb because of like I've described, he's so beloved by the fan base and he's such a talented player, but he did have a horrific injury that he's already had uh, once before in his career. And so that will be another factor just to see how he comes back from that injury. And if he's the same player that he once was um, beforehand when he was the elite running back that you knew was getting over a thousand yards a, a year uh, and just dominating like we've seen him for so many years in the past. So anyway, Julie, moving on to our next segment, what is something that you, you've been watching as of late on TV? Well, Zach, I'm glad you asked. Um, I found a very cool documentary last night um, you know, I don't know why the word documentary kind of has like, in my head, like connotations of something boring, but there are so many wonderful documentaries now, uh, about all kinds of things. I think part of it is 
it's really hard for them to come up with new concepts. So like, oh, let's dig up the past. <laughs> but anyway, um, the documentary, it, well, actually it was a movie based on, on real life. So I guess technically it's not a documentary. Anyway, it was called Blackberry. And it was about, um, you know, how the Blackberry device got started and how it ended and what caused it to drop off the face of the earth, basically. And uh, it was really cool because the characters are like really geeky and hilarious, actually. Blackberry fruit. Do you like that? Um, Well, the, the Blackberry I'm talking about is like the device, like before the iPhones. It was the cool phone before the iPhone, um, but oh, I do I, like I, to eat blackberries. So, was that yeah. would that be a top fruit of yours if you had mm, blackberry? No, I think my top fruit might be pineapple. Ooh. What about your top fruit? I would probably say strawberry, but mm. I think watermelon would be up there as well. That, that's a tough one. That'll be for another uh, podcast. Yes. We'll have to absolutely. Uh, um, yeah, I remember my dad used to always have the the newest BlackBerry before the iPhone, and that was like the cool thing. Like if you had that, you were so tech savvy, and like, uh, oh, you have this fancy device, and you're like Mr. Cool and everything. And so yeah, those were the good old days for sure. So I'm sure that was a very interesting thing to watch. Yes. Um. And I always like the movies or documentaries where like how something got started in the beginning. Um, I, I don't know. I always find that very fascinating. And I think, you know, a lot of us may have a really good idea within us, but we just don't take the risk or, you know, we don't take that step. And um, it's, it's really scary trying something new. Um, but these guys, I mean, it is very, it is, it is definitely a comedy Um and I'm sure they over exaggerated some parts of it. And I actually have it went back to investigate, you know, because sometimes these movies, you know, there's certain parts that it didn't happen in real life. And um, I might want to do some investigating on that. Um, but I think they just might have exaggerated things because the guys were like hilariously geeky and they were supposed to come up with a prototype the next day at one point in the movie. And they're like, but we can't because Friday night is movie night. So everybody in the in the company would you know watch a, a movie up on the projected on the wall. So I think even if you were are you know younger, I think you still might find it interesting how the process was and um, how they came from like nothing until they had like the hot phone. Um, but it was so funny back then because the phones would change so often. It was kind of hard to have the cool thing because there was a point when flip phones were cool and then they weren't cool um like nowadays some people still have flip phones and they kind of almost flip them off to the side so you can't see because they're embarrassed um because technology changes in the blink of an eye um but basically what killed blackberry was steve jobs iphone oh yeah that was it and they were having issues before then because they basically kind of like accidentally maxed out on the verizon servers um, oops, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, um, it was really, um, a good show to watch. And that's the kind of show that I like. It's not just the reality shows that people think, but, um, what have you been watching Zach? Well, it is just really cool to see, uh, various documentaries as you describe, uh, some that I, I really kind of have adhered to were seeing the Facebook documentary, how Facebook came to be. And then I've also uh, seen just different documentaries about different people and how they came from nothing and became this elite, this or that, or, or whatever it is. And so it's um, always cool to see how most people come from humble beginnings and they end up being this great person in, in whatever they're doing or whatever company they end up creating and so something interesting that I kind of just just thought of because we were talking about phones show so a show that I've been watching with my family on um, 
Uh, Netflix is called The Middle, which has um, been around for, for, for many years. I believe it was 09 to 18. That was the when the show was on. And I really like this show because it, it relates a lot to my family in a lot of different ways. Some good, some bad, of course. And so one thing that uh, even in like those years, they all had flip phones and like that was a cool thing to have. Um, and that's not even that long ago, but just how times have changed where now it's like literally if you don't have an iPhone, it's like, well, do you have an Android or like what are you doing because that is like a, a must thing like if you go into a doctor's office and you're in the waiting room everybody there is just on their iphone that's just a part of life whereas say 10 15 years ago is a little different i heard a, a somebody talking once um <clears throat> i think that there's more iphone users than android um and they tend to kind of think you know iPhone users tend to think that, you know, they're superior, but there was a guy who went out with a girl on a first date. And then after the date, um, she texted him and the text bubble was green. And he's like, uh, it's just not going to work out because she had an Android. (laughs) I mean, I don't think people should judge you on what phone you have, you know, especially when it's hard to find the right person. Um, and I think it was a joke, but people you know, do have a certain attitude like, oh, those Android people. But the Android people, there's more they can do with their phones. They can add different features to it and they're not tied into the whole Steve Jobs of it all. I'd say the only difficulty is that if you have, say, on your computer, the messaging app with iPhone and then somebody has an Android and so you... Um, can't get the messages just on your computer like it has to be um, through the the phone and and so that's a little inconvenience so to speak yeah I think um, it's very interesting the whole smartphone phenomenon that happened um, because I remember I was an early adapter of course And I was showing people all the different things that you could do and you can go on the internet. It's a calculator. It's your music and all of the things in one. And I'm just telling you, I just love technology. I, I really, and I still have a 13. So um, I usually, I don't get the new one. Although I will say I had the second iPhone that came out, not the first. Um, I had a feeling that it was going to be really buggy and it was, it was really thick and, but you know, you have to start somewhere. And so, but I had the second one, this, the year, the second year. So in fact, my kids were talking, we always pass down technology. So when I would get a new phone, someone would get my old phone or, right. you know, when I got a new iPad, someone got my old iPad. And so, I mean, uh, you know, and I have four kids and everything. So, um, oh, we, we were really big on iPods too, to listen to music. That was another example of like a thing you had to have. Like that was a kind of like the Blackberry thing. It was like, you weren't cool if you didn't have an I, iPod to listen to your music and illegally download from LimeWire. Like that was a thing to do. And, oh, you were uh a you know a badass if you were downloading tunes from LimeWire and everything those were the days I had the very first one that came out it was really thin like this it was white and um it held a hundred songs it was like (laughs) mind-blowing and I think that killed CDs right there that that did yeah yeah I mean you know that's one thing with maybe one segment of our show we could talk about every week is like, you know, um, how things have changed in, in, a, in, in an aspect because so much of our world has changed. All right. So what else do you want to talk about, Zach? Well, I think there is something important for me coming up. 
Yeah, something like a milestone in your life. Yeah, but there are just a lot of different things uh, going on, and I have um, mixed emotions because I've discussed the pending brain surgery I might be having, and just with that, it's been quite an emotional journey and I know you um we talked about it on the last show but now you actually have a meeting with the doctor on Monday yeah meeting with the doctor on Monday so this is the actual guy who would be doing the uh, procedure but first they have to do a different procedure and this is essentially what they're going to do is they're going to put wires in my brain and they are going to see how like deep into my brain the um, seizures actually occur and so the reason why they would want to do this is they wouldn't want to do the surgery if the uh, if the various um, seizures were occurring like too deep into the brain or whatnot. And so essentially what they will do, they'll put the wires in your brain and then kind of monitor your uh, activity. So I'll have to unfortunately stay in the hospital for a, a little while, but uh, it is better, I think, to get the proper information, of course, because it is brain surgery, then should just kind of go for it like blindly. So they're taking the uh, precautions and I, th I think that's good. Obviously you don't wanna spend time in the hospital, but um, it is what it is. And um, if anyone is really interested in brain surgery and whatnot, this is called SEEG. So you could look that up on Google. It's got a very long name. I don't want to mispronounce it. So it's just about every letter. Yeah. And so after that um, occurs, they will have the like final, okay, we're good to do the surgery or um, no, we can't do it because of your brain waves and, and such. Well, you know, um, I must say, Zach, you're looking very dapper today with your, did you get a new haircut? Every day. Well, there's that. Yes. But especially good. Cause I think you, you had some kind of haircut recently, didn't you? Oh yes. Yeah. So I uh, went to the Northfield barber um, and it was a wonderful experience. Like it always is with those gentlemen. And they gave me this great cut as you can see. And uh, I just really enjoy the like process of getting, you want to talk about something that's the opposite of what we were just discussing in like technology and everything. This barbershop's like the old school, you go, you sit in the chair, they, they cut you up, you talk shop and uh, you know, you leave them cash and then a tip and. Uh, and they have a cash register, like an old oh, yeah. cash register. Oh yeah. And so it's very old school and it's traditional and it's like the opposite of everything else in this crazy world. So it's just, just a nice uh, experience. So where do you get your haircut? You know, it's really funny that we should talk about haircuts today because, you know, I'm my life is a little busy and I didn't realize I had a hair appointment today and that I missed. Um, last time I got my hair cut, I don't know, must have been a couple months ago. I said, well, let's schedule the next one because I always forget. Um, so uh, the lady uh, texted me, Katie, and said, are you coming in? I had you on the schedule for today. And I'm like, oh my God, I totally forgot. Um, so I rescheduled with her for next week. So um, next Saturday. So hopefully next week I'll have a new, well, I'm not really getting a new do. I just get it trimmed. You might not even notice a change, you but- Shave it all. 
you just <laughs> no, that was you. Kind of like Britney, I did. And Britney yeah, Spears. Uh, the few um, yeah, just... So originally I had, um, I was getting my, the one that created this style for me, which I love, uh, her name is Katie. And she was with another hair salon. That's where I met her and she came up with this magic. And then just recently, um, toward the end of last year, she moved to um, Suburban Lash, and which is much closer to where I live in Macedonia. Um, so, um, so now I will go next Saturday. I have it on my calendar. I won't forget. Um, so it's so funny that we were talking about haircuts and um, getting back to the barbershop. I happen to have a video, pretty recent too, of that barbershop that I oh, will yeah. put down in the description. I, I saw that. It's a it's a great video. So you should definitely check that out if you can. After the Johnny Manziel. Of course. Of course. Of course. And black. Well, maybe after after the barbershop video, you can watch the Blackberry one. Get the popcorn out, you know. Um, but we're running out of time and um we just want to keep people, you know, waiting for the next episode. Yeah, and one last funny little nuance. I guess it's not really funny, but there's probably a good chance with the brain surgery that they'll have to shave my head while doing it and you probably are thinking well what's the big deal bro like isn't brain surgery like a bigger deal than you know getting a haircut (laughs) and so uh that'll just be a little part of the procedure probably that they have to do I, i actually don't really know but I might be bald for a uh, few weeks, but it's it's all good. Well, you already you've been there, done that. Been there, done that. My mother was uh, thrilled with me shaving my head. Oh, you yeah. should have you should have said you were practicing for when you had the surgery. That would have been a good excuse. <laughs> I should I should have thought of that. We don't think of these things when we need to. <laughs> right. So, any uh, final thoughts before we wrap up? for today final thoughts um you know that's a that's a good thing i guess i would say with technology i kind of feel like if i blink i kind of feel like i missed something and something has changed when you look back at the time of that you've been around things have changed so fast and my mother who lived to be in her 90s kept saying where is all this going and um none of us know but um I tell you, I never get bored because things are always like there's something new every day and I learn every day. So I think if we can keep learning every day and things can keep changing at least somewhat, we'll never be bored. Very true. You're like a uh, preacher. I would just say in (laughs) regards to technology and we could have this debate in a future podcast, it would be, is the technology whether it's increase or decrease like is it better for society or or worse like would people look back upon like 50 years ago and say oh simpler times were better or is it better because we have all the technology now so that, that is a good debate our next or in the coming episodes for sure great idea yeah there's a lot to be said for that so Anyways, uh, thanks for watching episode three, everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. Bye.